everyone. Today I thought I'd try something just a teeny bit different. I was thinking back to the very beginnings of YouTube when I was watching more videos than I was creating and I would sit with a notepad and write down as someone did their makeup, the order in which they did it and how they applied it, the colors they used, the brushes. That's what hooked me into YouTube. And I, I miss those videos. I don't miss parts of it. Like I love that people have description boxes now and they're all filled out with links so that I don't have to sit with my notepad and write it all down. But I thought what I would do is put on my makeup, but before I jump into the makeup part, I wanna walk you through what I am using and the brushes that I plan to use so you can gather that all up. You can hit pause if you want, go get your makeup, and we can play together. We can do this step by step together. Now, of course, you can still watch this the good old fashioned way. Watch me go through the whole thing and, and try to recreate it on your own. And I'm not doing anything hard or technically difficult, but I just thought it'd be more old school fun uh, to kind of talk with you as I'm putting on my makeup and, and the why and all that. So let's get into the products that I'm going to be using. The Hero product, the focus of my eyeshadow, is going to be the Natasha Denona Glam Palette and specifically a look that I showed on stories the other day and I tried something very different. I rarely use cool tones. When I do, I try to stick with browns and toast, but this time I used all the gray tones in the palette and I really like how it came out and it shocked me. So that's the look we're going for. Now, if you don't have the Glam palette, try to find something similar. Um, I know that ColourPop has a palette with a lot of the same tones. I don't know if they have those gray tones or not. After I finish filming this video, if I find some dupes, I will put that down in the description box, so go check that out. As far as foundation goes, all the complexion products, I would say just grab what you have, what you like to wear. I feel like cool tones can wash me out, so to counterbalance that, I like a foundation with a little more coverage. So I am going for my Wander Beauty Nude Illusion. It's just the most perfect coverage. And then the usual concealers and all that stuff. I am going with my kind of fallback go-to bronzer, the L'Oreal Lumi bronzer. Because I have cool tones going on my eyes, I want something with a little more warmth, I guess, to balance it out. So this is a newer to me shade. It's the e.l.f. blush that has the primer built in, and this is the shade Always Rosy. And then for lips, I Maybelline sent me some PR, and it had some liquid lipstick in it, and I love the formula so much, I just went out and bought different shades. And the one that I am wearing today is, I think it's Dreamer. Yes, number 10, Dreamer. It's definitely a cool tone pink. Goes very well with this. But it is dry to the touch, so I'm gonna top it with some of their new Lifter Gloss, and this is in the shade. As far as brushes go, just use what you have in general. I will say for a lot of this, I'm using fingers. I'm going to use a more flat shader brush to lay down the lid shades for the most part. So my favorite flat shader brush is the MAC 239, but if you have anything that approximates this flat sort of paddle shape. I used this yesterday, you can see the gray. Um, go for that. Depending on your eye shape, I like a domed brush for the crease socket work. So I'm of course gonna go with my BK Beauty brushes. See how big and fluffy that one is? This is the 201 brush, but you can use a Sigma, I don't know if I have a Sigma one in here, but Sigma makes one similarly. Um, one I really like is the Zoeva Luxe Crease Brush. It's a little less fluffy, but very round. And then for really into that crease socket line, it's something a little more precise. So you could go with the MAC 217. That's sort of a classic. Again, you can see that I used it. It's, it has a paddle shape, but it's narrow this way, so you can really get it into the crease. But the one that I generally prefer, where did it go? is the 202 from BK Beauty. It's much tinier. If you look at it side by side with the 201, it's much more narrow, takes up a lot less real estate on your face. And then it's always helpful to have a small brush to go under your eyes. Again, BK Beauty is my fallback for brushes. I promote and support the BK Beauty business, not just because the owner and creator is one of my close friends, but because they're really freaking good brushes. This is the pencil smudge brush. And then um, I also really like this tiny little smudger, the 204. There you go. 
So I think we have everything we need. Let's get started and put on some makeup. I did all my skincare, SPF, all that before I came and sat down. It's been a little while, so I am gonna use a primer. I generally don't need a primer with the Wonder Beauty foundation, but just because I haven't put on moisturizer in about an hour, I'm gonna add a little bit. I am using the um, Pores No More from Dr. Brandt. I really like this one. I put on my under eye corrector before I put on foundation and concealer. That way it just kind of blends a little more seamlessly and I'm concentrating it just where those dark shadows are. I will say another one I've really been liking is this Maybelline corrector. I can't, I'm getting the name wrong, but it'll be in the description box. It is very orange. like jarringly orange on the skin, but once you layer foundation and concealer over it, it's kind of amazing. I was looking at myself in some videos during editing and I thought, do I need that trough filler? I mean, it looks sunken in. What's going on here? And all I did was change to that deeper orange concealer or corrector and it totally changed everything. But it does take some work to blend in and I'm just not in the mood for it right now. <laughs> so we're using this. And then we have the Wonder Beauty foundation. Again, it doesn't matter what foundation you're wearing. I just have found that when I wear really light colors or um, shades that I feel kind of wash me out or really bold colors, which can tend to wash me out because it's such a contrast between the bold shade and the complete lack of pigment on my face. Um, that it's good to have a more fuller coverage foundation. So reach for your favorite. And again, the brush, this is probably, if I had to only use one brush, I could only use this for my entire face. I would get different ones so they're clean. It's the 106 from BK Beauty. It's just, I use it for concealer. I use it obviously right now for foundation. I can use it for blending in cream blush, cream highlighter, cream or liquid bronzers. Um, I could pounce on some powder blush with it. I mean, it's just the workhorse, I think. It's like the utility player of beauty brushes. A little sports reference there. I mean, look how beautiful that coverage is. I haven't even gotten to concealer yet and there were definitely some issues going on. A little maskiny happening. I still wanna brighten under the eyes, so I'm going with my um, Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Concealer and it's in the shade 0.5 because I'm really fair. It's very pigmented, so a little goes a long way. And I can use this, and I do, but I feel like using my finger today because I would just want to focus it where I need it. This is the concealer I've been reaching for again. I do like the Dior one, but there, I think this is just a little bit better. It's the Too Faced Born This Way. Concealer, I have it in the shade Almond, which is probably not, not quite the right shade, but it works. Um, yeah, see, I don't know if you can tell, it's a little yellow, but it'll work. I do wanna go find a new shade in this. It's, I mean, if I have like whole areas that I kinda wanna just conceal, it blends like foundation. It's just kind of, I don't know, I love it, and I love the big bottle, and it stays put. I would like to also get it in a much lighter shade to try under my eyes. Since I am so high maintenance, I use two different powders to set my makeup. I use um, the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Loose Powder for under my eyes. And I don't even know what brush I'm using. I think it's the Sigma Tapered yeah, Highlighter. And I also have been known to use this in my creasy lines on my face. And then, if you saw my advent calendar review, you saw that I got like Sephora favorites for the Hanukkah portion, and they have the Peach Perfect Loose Powder. This stuff is incredible. I don't know what's going on with my skin lately, but it's getting shiny. I don't have oily skin, but it gets glowy, and I've used this twice. Oh my gosh, it also smells like peaches. I didn't notice that. It has a slight peach tint to it. I don't think that's necessarily translated onto the skin, but I just love 
what this does to my skin. It also seems to blur out any kind of texture. I wish I had known about this in the summer when I really needed a good powder. I think this will last quite a while, but I can definitely see myself repurchasing this in the full size. And that was the It Cosmetics powder brush. I love this ball brush. It's just, it's great. Okay, let's get some bronzer on. Definitely need to warm things up if you're working with cool toned eyeshadow. Um, I think today I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 107. It's a little more precise. I've noticed I've been kind of flinging the bronzer around a little too carelessly and it's getting a little muddy. So I'm really gonna try to keep it focused to where I want it. Like when I use a big brush, it gets all the way down here. That's not good. I'm basically keeping it on my cheekbone and even going up a little bit and just a tiny bit under. I can be all over the place on my forehead, but when I have the most powder or bronzer on the brush, I'm gonna put it here first and then bring it up to my temples. Do it along. See, you can already see it went down a little too far there, I think we can fix that. And then what's left on the brush, I'm gonna run down the side of my nose, give it a little light contour. Then I'm gonna go back with the brush I used for foundation and just kinda, see, clean it all up. For highlighter, this is the order I do it. Bronzer, highlighter, and blush last. Highlighter, I've been dipping back into another oldie. Tiny little um, Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Opal. There's no rhyme or reason to why I picked it. I just felt like using it again. I'm gonna use that same tapered Sigma brush. So it's my skin tone. So it gives me a little bit of a gleam without it being like, whoa, she's wearing highlighter. And now I'm going to grab the e.l.f. blush. I still haven't found a blush brush I love as much as this one. This is from Flower Beauty. It's their precision brush. Okay, I don't want too much blush. I just don't like it, so. And I'm not doing it like this, because then, look what happens. I'm just gonna do a little tutorial. Okay, if you smile, watch what happens when you unsmile. It's too high, so don't smile. Just put it a little bit above, like that. So that, now, see? It lifts up your face a little bit. Like maybe do a little quarter smile. And then I like to add I used to watch my mom do this when I was a kid. She would put a little bit of blush up here. Just kind of ties it all together. That was before bronzer existed. I wonder if that's why people did it. That's it for the complexion. So now is when I'm gonna put on my lip balm. If I put it on at the very beginning, then as I'm putting on foundation and powder, it all just sticks and that's gross. So this is my Kors olive oil lip balm. It smells lemony, it's so good. Definitely need some lip balm if you're gonna be wearing liquid lipsticks. For brows, I have gone back to drugstore. I love the Dior brow pencil for sure, but if you're in a hurry, I you gotta draw all the little lines, and this is great if you're in a hurry. It's the Wet n Wild Retractable Brow Pencil. I've been using it in the shade Ash Brown, and I love how fast I can get my eyebrows on. So to put on my brows, I basically draw an outline top and bottom and then fill it in. Very light pressure because this is very pigmented. So you can get way too dark really fast. I've had some recent questions about microblading and what I recommend it and where did I get it done and I hate to give you a flat out no, don't do it answer. I got mine done, oopsie, I got a little crazy, I'm gonna have to fix that. Um, I got mine done October of 2019. You're supposed to go twice. You get it done once, and then six weeks later, you go in and get it done again, so that the pigment stays. I went once and didn't come back, and so it faded pretty quickly. So this is just all my real brows. So here's my thought, oops, let's get the spoolie side. So here are my thoughts on this, and this is complete um, subjective guessing. There's no fact to this at all. And that is the, con the, the process of putting on the microblading is hundreds of micro cuts to your skin with a blade. I don't think long-term that's a good idea, especially the skin around your eyes. So that took me no time at all to draw on my brows. 
I'm, I'm good for now. I'm not, I personally wouldn't recommend doing it. I don't, I think it's going to be one of those beauty things that 10 years from now we're going, what did we do? Why were we recommending this? This is not good. I think in certain situations, it's probably great. If you've gone through chemotherapy, if you have severe hair loss, there's only so much pencil a person can put on. I think that's a very unique situation. I just have some reservations about recommending a procedure where you're basically recommending that you mutilate the skin around your eyes. Um, face, it just doesn't sound like a good idea, does it? I'm using this and I am just painting by number here where it says crease, I'm putting in the crease, where it says transition, I'm putting it in the transition and so forth. I'm starting with this transition shade and then I'm gonna move to this in the crease. So these two first. So if you're looking for dupes, this is what's going in the uh, transition area and this is what's going in the crease. And I will explain what I mean by crease and transition. So with the fluffiest brush, I'm taking that lighter kind of cement color and I'm going over and above and in the middle of my socket line, like all over the place. So it's just straight in the middle basically. Right in the middle of your socket line, a little bit's gonna go above it, a little bit's gonna get down under the lid. And I'm doing a little bit of window washing, but I'm mostly going straight across with a slight curve. That's gonna depend on the shape of your eye, of course. But starting it out here and back and forth. You can do little circular motions if you feel like it, or just back and forth, back and forth. And with my pencil brush, taking that same transition color and just running it right underneath the lash line, the full length of the eye. It's not going to put down a ton of color, but it's a good base. And if you're wondering how low to go with your shadow, go to that first wrinkle that goes under your eye. It's a good rule of thumb. Okay, now with a slightly more precise brush, I'm doing the Zoeva Luxe Crease Brush. I'm going to go in with the crease shade, that second shade. And this time I'm placing it right, basically in the same spot, but because the brush is smaller, it's really just going to stay in the actual socket line. As you, I think you can see there's color above where I'm putting this current color. Still concentrating most of it on the outside. If you have bigger eyes, it's a little bit, a transition shade is, helps more because there's more area to transition. When you have smaller eyes like I do, there's not a whole lot of space. And then with that same pencil brush, going in with crease and Pointing it more up so the color is more towards the actual lash line. It won't go down as far, and I'm only going about halfway. Now for the fun part. I'm using three shades on my lid. Let me show you what they are before we get started. That's what we're looking at. Inner, center, outer. Because we're dealing with a smaller area, it might be easier just to use a flat brush. So starting with the inner corner, I like starting with a lighter color first. I'm just putting it in the inner part. Just divide your lid by thirds. Now, if you have hooded tiny eyes like I do, as you're putting it down, don't stop at the crease because this is where my crease stops. I'm gonna pull it up to this actual socket to make it look like there's more surface area than there is. And patting it instead of sweeping it will give it a little more um, pigment, a little more shine. So that's what we have. Now I'm just gonna flip the brush over, go for the center eyelid shade, pat it. Now we swept this first shade over a little, like basically halfway. So now I'm kind of layering this on top and focusing this more in the middle and bringing it up as well. We can drag it a little closer to the outer corner. For the outer eyelid, I'm actually going back to a more precise pointed brush. This is the 20, why do I always get the 202? I wanna say it's some, a different number, but it's always the 202. I'm dipping in at the top, at the point, and I'm getting on the side because I'm going to get, use the point to get in the outer corner, and then I'm gonna kind of blend with the side of the brush, and I'm gonna keep this concentrated on that outer corner, but using the point, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit into the socket line slash crease. And then from there, you can just kind of play and decide, is this as deep as I want it? Do I want it a little deeper? I think I do, so just start adding more. I might freshen up that center a little bit. And the 
inner. Then I'm gonna go back with my original transition shade, put a little bit on the brush, kind of pat off on my hand, and just go across the top again, just to blend it all out. That's it. Eyes are done. I'm gonna curl my lashes and slap on mascara. Still really loving my eyelash primer from Dior. It has been incredible. I am also trying to use up the 8 million tubes of open mascara that I have, so I am reaching for one of my open tubes, which is the Wander Beauty Mile High Club. Also, the Revita Lash has definitely kicked in, and I have some weird lashes that are like half an inch longer than other lashes. They're not growing evenly. It looks a little strange. I'm actually contemplating taking a manicure scissors and kind of trimming them, so <laughs> I mean, it's, it, you'll see in a minute. And because this brush is shaped almost the same as the Giga Black Extended Play MAC version, I'm just gonna use this on the top and the bottom. It also doesn't smudge, which is kind of important for bottom mascara. Well, for all mascara. I mean, who wants smudgy? Nobody wants that. Remember to tip your head back when you're applying your top mascara so that your lashes are away from the skin of your face. Look at that. Can you see the lash on this side that's so much longer than everybody else? I don't know what's happening there. I have to say this Mile High Club might be top three mascaras. It's just incredible. Normally I would have done um, a setting spray, but I forgot to bring it and I'll live. I'll do it later. Okay, I'm just waving off the lip balm and let's get some lipstick on. Let me bring my mirror closer. Just kind of basic. It's very cool toned pink. It doesn't need this many coats. I don't know why I'm doing this. And then just to kind of, it's going to dry down and it gets a little dry feeling on my lips. This doesn't go exactly, but it sort of brings down that coolness a little bit and it ties in. There are some um, brown undertones here, so I'm using this lip gloss to kind of tie it all together. This new lip gloss from Maybelline is outstanding. This is the finished look. Let me go do my hair. I'll be right back. All right, this is not my best hair day, but it's going to have to do for now. This is the final look. I think it's a lot of fun. I hope you liked this kind of get out your makeup and play with me. It's not terribly different from a get ready with me, but I just wanted to try something different. Let me know if you had fun playing along, if you played along, and if you'd like me to do more of these in the future, I'd be happy to. Gotta put on makeup, so why not film it? Anyway, have a wonderful day. Thank you for choosing to spend some of it with me, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.